If I run over there and kick that football, what's gonna happen? I know what my instincts and my experience from the real world tells me is going to happen, but having never seen this particular problem in this particular game before, I have no way of knowing until I actually just run over there and kick it. Oh, well, okay. Well, maybe I have to program how the ball should react first. And luckily, that's the subject for today's video, making the level react to the player. This is an important step in creating a dynamic world that feels alive and responsive. In the previous video, I showed how to implement the basic functionality of Colmesh, which is a 3D collision system for GameMaker. Today's video will cover three concepts that are important to know about when working with Colmesh, triggers, groups, and dynamic objects. So let's dive right in. I made some crystals that I can place haphazardly around in the room. These will play the part of the game's basic collectible for the time being. I do plan to switch over to something more thematic later, but they'll do for now. At the moment they float in the air, but I want them to float just above the ground, and for that I can cast a ray from way above the level to way below it, and place the crystals where the ray hits the level, plus some value to the z-axis. So in the crystals create event I can use cm cast ray to do this. This will return an array that contains some data about the ray, including the position of the intersection, which I can read out with the macro cm ray.z. And like that, the crystals are floating just above the level. But still, nothing happens when I touch them. If Mushy here is going to line his pockets with crystals, we're going to have to turn the crystals into trigger objects. This is a feature of Colmesh that works in a similar way to the collision event in GameMaker. And it lets you define what's going to happen when the player touches an object. First, I gotta add the collision shape of the crystals to the level Colmesh. For simplicity, I'll make their collision shapes spherical. Also in the create event, I'll define a collision method. This is the method that is going to be called when the player touches the crystal, so I'll destroy the instance and remove the collision sphere from the level call mesh. Then I can assign the collision method to the sphere with the function cm custom parameter set. That's the crystal half of the collision done, now we need to actually activate the trigger in the player object. In the player's collide function, I'll add cm collide activate triggers. This function checks for intersections between the collider and the level call mesh, and executes the trigger functions if it finds any collisions with the triggers. However, since we've already done a collision check, I can use the region that is returned from that. This is a list that's containing only the objects that are near the player. Just a nice way to reuse data. Okay, the trigger function worked, and the crystals and their collision shapes are being destroyed, but I noticed two problems here. The obvious one is that the collision shapes are being drawn. The less obvious one is that the player avoids the crystal before activating the trigger function. I don't want the crystals to be solid, and I don't want their collision shapes to be visible. Luckily, both of these problems can be fixed with groups. You can see that group is an unused argument in the CM sphere function. This is set to the solid group by default, but you can override it and add it to the trigger group instead. Here are the groups that come with Colmesh, though you can easily add more groups to fit your game as needed, just by following the same pattern. The groups are all binary numbers, so that they can easily be combined. So for my game, I'm adding a grass group and a metal group that I can use to separate the two groups and draw them with different textures. Back in the player's collide function, I can make the CM displace function selectively collide with only solid objects, and then make the CM collider activate triggers function selectively activate only trigger objects. Also, to hide the triggers, I can make CM debug draw only draw solid objects by giving it CM group solid as a mask. And there we go, the crystals are done. Now Mushi finally has some colorful gems and shiny baubles to collect. Now, before we continue with adding other interactive objects, I want to make some changes to the way the level is drawn. Right now I'm using CM Debug Draw. This function loops through all the objects in the scene and draws them all individually. This is very, very slow. What I can do instead is to bake all the solid objects into a single vertex buffer. I can't do it in Create Event since the objects haven't been added yet at that point. So I'll initialize the variable to minus one in create event, and then in the draw event, I'll check if the vertex buffer has been created. If it hasn't, I'll make one and then bake all the solid level geometry to it. Then I can just submit that from then on. Uh, 
I made another object called O Gravity Sphere. This is also a spherical trigger object, and this object will change the player's up direction so that it always points away from the middle of the sphere. It also scales with the image X scale so that I can scale it in the room editor. So let's add one to the big planet on the side of the disk and then we'll test. And there we go, 3D Gravity has finally been reintroduced to the 3D Gravity platformer. Let's add more planets to the level. Oh, okay, so apparently jumping around can be dangerous. You may even risk falling forever into the ether. I may have to fix that later. But before that, let's put our focus back onto making the football responsive. In the containers folder of the Colmage system, there is a container called Dynamic Object. I barely mentioned it in the previous video, but this is a special kind of container that can only contain a single object. And this enables us to transform the shape the dynamic object contains in real time. Here's the create event of the football, and at the moment it's just adding itself to the coal mesh as a solid sphere. And I could actually move the sphere when it's added this way, but then I would have to manage updating the level coal mesh so that the sphere is only stored in the part of the level that it actually inhabits. A dynamic container makes it easier to do this automatically. So instead of adding the sphere to the coal mesh directly, I'll put it into a dynamic container first, and then put that into the level. The dynamic has a matrix argument. This is the matrix that is used to transform the shape it contains. What it actually does is transform the collider by the inverse of this matrix. Then it performs collision checks, and then transforms the result back to world space. Notice that I'm giving the matrix the coordinates of the ball. This means I also have to remove it from the sphere creation code, otherwise they'll be added to the ball twice. Since I want the ball to be both solid and a trigger, I can assign it to both of those groups by combining them with the binary OR. I'll also give the dynamic a simple collision function just to test and see that it actually works. Yep, it does. I, <laughs> I gave the ball some physics off camera. I'm not gonna go into detail about everything here, a lot of it works the same way as the player's physics, but I'll take you through some key points. I'm using the vector library that Dragonite made. This makes it easier to work in three dimensions, I'll put the link down in the description. In the collision function, I've made the ball roll away when the player touches it. Here's the step event. This is where I use what's called Verlet integration to make the ball move. I'll link a video where I explain how that works up in the corner. What I want to focus on is this part, where the ball collides with the level geometry. Before displacing the ball out of the level geometry, I have to remove the solid group from the dynamic, otherwise it will collide with itself. Then I can perform the collision check before adding the solid group back in. Then at the end here I can update the matrix of the dynamic, which contains the new position of the ball. I also need to update the level call mesh so that the ball is removed from the regions it no longer occupies, and is added to the regions it actually inhabits. Okay, so the ball is reacting, but it's kind of stuttering. Like, it isn't as smooth as I would have liked. Let's have another look at the ball, though. I've made the central sphere of the ball both solid and a trigger. The player will first be displaced out of the sphere, and then when checking for triggers to activate, it will not always register a collision. What I can do instead is to make two separate spheres, and make the inner sphere solid and the outer sphere a trigger. Though, I did previously say that you could only add one shape to a dynamic. Uh, and now we're gonna add two? Well, that is possible, you just have to put it inside a another um, container. So, for the central ball, uh, let's see here, I make it with a radius of... Uh, radius minus, let's say, minus five. And this should be solid. And I'll make another sphere, and I'll name this trigger. And this should be a 
trigger and that should be slightly larger than the radius so I'll add 5 to that and in order to add both of these to the same dynamic I have to make a new list I'll name that combined equals C and list and add both the ball and the trigger to the combined list add the ball and then the trigger and then add the combined list to the dynamic let's see and I want the custom parameter to be applied to the trigger oh and also we're gonna try something fun here I could make the ball also activate triggers um, and for that I can use CM collider activate triggers I'll use the collider we made previously and for the object I'll use collider cm.region like we did for the player and I'll give it a mask of cm group trigger. Now there is one problem here and that is that the uh, ball itself is containing a trigger but we can use the same trick we used for the collisions and we can just disable the trigger um, let's see here. And then re-enable it after checking for triggers. I also added a bunch of balls around the planets since they should be following the laws of gravity by now. Oh, you know, we just gotta kick those balls into orbit. We're gonna play interplanetary football up in here. Here's a totally original spin attack I made for Mushi. Incorporating it into Mushi's finite state machine was easy enough, and whenever he performs the move, he also spawns a temporary trigger that blasts footballs away. So let's go over there and cause some carnage. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can kick it to the other planet. Oh yeah! And while I enjoy myself in the background, I think this is a good place to end the video. Mush's world is richer now with sparkling crystals and kickable footballs. Drop your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Let's keep the conversation going and the ideas flowing. If you've enjoyed today's development journey, give that like button a tap and hit subscribe to join me next time. We've got more coding challenges ahead and Mush's adventures are just getting started. Until we meet again, Snitter out, happy coding.